everybody. Welcome to my live. And if you happen to be watching later, welcome to the replay. My name is Robin and I'm with Robin's Egg Blue Creations. And I'm also an independent designer with Chalk Couture. So uh, tonight we're going to be doing a project. Um, I'm not going to show it to you yet because I wanted to do a little bit of an unboxing. I got a small haul from the holiday um, mini catalog suite that launched last week. Um, so I kind of wanted to show you that. But before I get into that, make sure when you hop on that you say hi in the comments and tell me where you're watching from. Also wanted to let you know that I am live streaming using an online platform called StreamYard. So it allows me to go live in three places this evening. I'm live on my Facebook business page. I'm live in my private uh, crafty group, the Robin's Egg Blue Creations Crafty Collab. And I'm also live on my YouTube channel. So if you hear me refer to a comment that you may not see in your feed, that's why they might be watching from a different platform. Also, if you're watching from my group, if you wouldn't mind letting StreamYard have access to your name, that way if you comment in my feed, you'll show up under your name and not Facebook user. That way I know who I'm saying hi to. So I see that Jason is hopping on from upstairs. Uh, Bonita is watching from Facebook. And Chris, my father-in-law, is also watching from upstairs. So welcome. Um, I'm going to also, if you wouldn't mind sh uh, sharing the video, sprinkling it across YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff. Uh, tag your crafty friends in the comments so that they can hop on over and watch. And also, if you wouldn't mind giving me some thumbs ups and some hearts, that would be great. So I received my little mini haul. I didn't get a whole lot of transfers, but I did want to get some new um, Christmas transfers. So I'm going to open those up. But let me first move this way so maybe you can see a little better. So I'm going to pull these out. Let's see. Easier said than done. They're all the way at the bottom. And if you didn't know, last Friday was 100 days until Christmas. So just thought I'd let you know that. Okay, so I want to flip these over. I'm going to start with, I must have just gotten one size A transfer. Yep. So I got uh, this Merry Christmas. And it is the little, it's called Trio of Trees. Um, and I did mention this one the other day, if you were watching on Saturday and I did that wine glass or wine bottle, these little trees all over the uh, wine bottle would be really cute. And actually, if you split this sentiment into two different pieces, so you did Mary and then Christmas underneath, this would fit perfect on the wine bottle as well. So that's a size A, that's $9.99. And then I have mistletoe and kisses. So this one can be cut apart into three different pieces. And this one transfer fits great on the block set that I've used already for Halloween. Um, the three-piece block set, this would work great. Or you can use it on a multitude of different surfaces. These would be great for um, wreath signs. So if you're a wreath maker and you're making a 10-inch or a 12-inch wreath sign, this would be great. So again, that's a size B, and those are $14.99. So then I picked up, this one is a carryover from last year, but it's All Hollows Eve Minis. Um, I liked, hey, Stacia. Which one did you like? You like this one? Oops. Is this one the one you liked? I'm wondering did, if this is this one the one that was in your kit, I wonder. Like Halloween potion jars. Um, especially the, the rest of your bones. Spooks galore and the trick or treat. Those would make great little uh, potion bottles. Oh, I did have some more size A ones. Here's a cute joy. Which also, if you stacked the letters, so J-O-Y, it would work on a wine bottle. These were just some of the ones we were talking about for my live on Saturday. And then the cute little ornaments, deck the halls. This one would be really cute. Um, I think that's all. Those were mixed in with the size Bs. So then next we have Here Comes Santa Claus. So it's his little silhouette with the words cut out. Really cute. Really, this would be really cute on a pillow. 
um, be really cute on a banner. Um, it would also make a really cute wreath sign. Hint, hint, Stacia. And then we have uh, the Christmas minis. So these are new this year, uh, a newer set. So we have the ice skates, Noel, some little candy pieces, which would be really cute. A little gingerbread man, that would make a really cute banner. Um, these would also make really cute ornaments. You could uh, chuck them on the clear Christmas ornaments. Or even the wood block ornaments would be really cute. The little wood round discs. And I really like this one. True Love was born in a stable. So I'm excited to use this one. Uh, Stacia said she was really excited for the Christmas minis. Yeah, they're new this year. We've had some Christmas minis in the past, but these are new designs, so I'm anxious to use them. There's lots of ways you can use the Christmas minis. They make, um, going back to these, you could pair them with the wooden gift tags on my chalk site, and they would make really cute uh, gift tags on your Christmas presents or gift bags, presents for your neighbors, for your co-workers, uh, chalk on a wooden tag and then add it to your little gift and it would make a really cute keepsake and then they could in turn put that tag on their Christmas tree as an ornament. And then true love was born in a stable. That would look really cute on a glass block with some lights inside. Then we have holiday hope. It is actually the lots of love transfer and I haven't talked a lot about lots of love. But What's of Love is a nonprofit group and they provide um, solar lights for mainly they go into third world countries where um, the only um, source of electricity is with kerosene, uh, which kerosene is very expensive, especially in third world countries. And it's also dangerous. Um, there's lots of burns. Um, just lots of accidents. And so Lots of Love goes into these third world countries. And they provide not only the solar lights to replace kerosene, but then they also provide education, support for families who can now use the income that they were using to purchase kerosene to invest in, say, chickens or other um, means of, of resources that can provide income for their families. So it's not only a resource for electricity, but it's a, it's a resource for education to um, provide more income for their families. They've also gone into uh, Puerto Rico after the hurricane that they had there a few years ago. So um, I hope to add some Watts of Love fundraisers into my activities. Um, but this is the Watts of Love transfer. So every time a customer purchases this transfer, $2 is donated to Watts of Love. And it takes, it's $50 per light. So every $50 that is raised, another family is able to get some solar lighting and they can replace the kerosene that they're currently using with solar lighting, which brings more income into their family. And then last but not least, I have a size C transfer. This is Santa's favorite treat, Candy Cane Co. I just thought these were really cute. I really like this this way to the peppermint forest. It reminds me of Candyland. I thought that one was really cute. It'll make some really cute signs. And then I can't show you this one yet, but this is the new Club Couture um, transfer for October. So here's your little sneak peek and that's all I'm gonna show you on that one. So you'll have to come back on um, around the first of the next month to see that design. Or you can sign up as a club member or a designer and get a sneak peek that way. Okay, so tonight we're going to be using this Pick Your Own Pumpkins uh, transfer. And these are reusable silk screen transfers. They are sticky back. And anywhere you see the white is actually a silk screen material. Um, I can reuse this about 8 to 12 times depending on how well I take care of it. So because it's reusable, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to write the name on the back. It's actually called Pumpkin Patch. 
I thought it was called something else. So I'm writing the name on the back because this is reusable. So I know that when I'm cleaning my transfers, that this transfer goes on this backer sheet and that this is the back side. <laughs> Sorry, Bonita, but I'm not going to share it early. Some designers do that, but um, there's still lots of September left. And um, I'm just I'm going to focus on the September one. <laughs> but you'll just have to come back in near the end of September and I'll give you another little sneak peek. Okay, so I have created, I don't, if you watched my gnome uh, video, you saw that I made a large palette sign out of five gallon paint sticks. Well, this time I took the one gallon paint sticks and I turned them into a palette. And let me see if I have, I'm gonna show you, yep. Here's what the packs look like. And I just get mine at my local hardware store. The one gallons come in a 10 pack and the five gallons come in a three pack. And these are, I'm positive they are less than a dollar for 10 of these. And this one took um, nine. It took almost a whole pack. Yep. Because then I just cut, I cut these two to make the palette. I just cut the weird end off. So less than a dollar, I have a great surface. And so then I painted it with um, chalk paste and then I gave it a bit of a sanding with my, um, I don't know what I did with it, my little sander, kind of roughed up the edges. It's got a distressed look. So I'm gonna put all these to the side. And because this is a painted surface, I'm going to wax it and I'm going to use, I'm using this mint wax finishing paste because this is the darker version of the paste. So I wanted to give a little bit of an aged look. I haven't used this one yet, but I've seen it done. So we're gonna give it a whirl. So it's gonna give it kind of a vintage, dirty, uh, really roughed up look. It's gonna change the color a little bit of the, uh, of the palette sign. It's gonna get into all those grooves and it's gonna even out the surface of the paint and then it's gonna keep my transfer from sticking and pulling up all of that paint when I pull the transfer up. So did everybody have a great weekend? Tell me something that you did over the weekend that was fun. I rested. I was pooped this weekend, so I didn't do a whole lot. So I'm going to live vicariously through you guys that did fun things this weekend. I'm just rubbing this in. I'm not going to chalk the whole surface, but because this is a darker wax and it's changing the color, I'm going to make sure I get all of the areas. Did your favorite NFL or college team win this weekend? I'm a KU fan, so we'll probably never, I'll probably never be able to celebrate another football win. Hey, Amanda. So she says they had a busy weekend with football and around the house chores. Well, you didn't get all your chores done because you didn't come over and do mine. Okay. And you got to play with a new toy this weekend. Okay, so I'm just going to college, yes, Chiefs, no. Yeah, that was quite the game last night. Although I didn't watch the end of it. I 
Amanda says your favorite YMCA team did. Well, was that Oliver? Yay, Oliver. Okay, I think I've got that good and buffed in. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. So you did my father-in-law's house, but you'll get us next time. Okay. Because this is a sticky back transfer and it's never been used before, I'm going to, for one, peel it off of its backer sheet. And I always try to peel the backer sheet off of the transfers versus peeling the transfer off because they'll tend to fold in on themselves if I do it the other way. But I am going to fuzz this, which means I'm just laying it down on a terry cloth surface so that I can put down a layer of lint and it will keep it from being the transfer from being sticky enough that it will that it stretches after when I pull it off and the lint does come off once I clean it so I'm gonna put I'm gonna do this one mile ahead sentiment with the arrow on this um, I don't really know what that's called this brace piece right here and then I'm going to do the rest of the pumpkin on the inside of the palette and I'm not going to do the pick your own I don't think I don't think I left myself enough room so I'm just kind of eyeballing it like I always do and I'm just going to rub it down to make sure that I've got Got it good and stuck. Now, our house stays fairly clean now, I guess. I mean, compared, as long as I put all my craft stuff away, it still stays pretty clean. Because I still haven't finished cleaning up from the workshop I had last Monday. Okay, so this is chalk paste, and it's just kind of chalk in a wet form. It dries semi-permanent, but on most surfaces, it's water-soluble. I should say on most non-porous surfaces, it's water-soluble. On wood, it's pretty much permanent, and you can sand it off and paint over it, but um, the pigments will stain wood, so it's not. it makes wood not a reusable surface. So I've just dipped my chalk, my squeegee into the chalk paste, and I'm just going to place it down on the silk screen area and pull down, making sure I cover up all of those areas. And then I'm just going to go back and I'm going to even out all my squeegee lines and I'm just going to put the excess back in my jar. So that part's done. I'm just going to peel that off slowly and it is a distressed um, transfer which means it's purposely not covering 100%. Now I'm going to dry it. I did eat off the birthday cake this weekend, so I did do that. I'm trying to see how much I could eat over the weekend. I did pretty good. It is a yummy cake. Okay. So that's dry. So now I'm going to grab my transfer again, but I'm also so I've got my transfer back over here I'm going to put some just some extra pieces of backer sheet that I save underneath here so that um, this part of the transfer doesn't stick uh, 
to where I've already chopped. It's kind of a little trick I picked up. So now I'm just kind of lining this up from side to side and making sure I get it in between those two brace pieces. That's pretty good. So then I'm going to get this, make sure the stem is down. Bonita has a question. If you can get more than one project out of those single packets of paste, what's the best way to store them once they are opened? Well, let me pull one out. Because I'm visual. We'll pretend this one is open. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to get most of the paste down towards the bottom. And then I would roll this part down and either clip it with a binder clip or you can tape it. And then for extra precaution, you can always put it in like a little snack size zippy bag. Um, but definitely roll the end down and definitely get as much of the paste down towards the bottom of the packet as you can. And then get out all of the air up at the top and then roll it down. You could also find, I just happen to have this one laying here, but they make smaller buckets of little things like this but you could put it in a little container um and i have some if you wanted some i've never ever used them but they're about a quarter size and they have a little screw on lid Let's see. I probably, i'm probably not organized enough to find them um, these little guys, they're just a little quarter sized container and I've got some if you wanted to, and I would just be more than happy to give them to you. Um, but they would fit the excess, but rolling it down and taping it and either binding and using a binder clip would work well as well. Does that help? Um, and I bet the craft stores would probably have something. That's where I got these. The little makeup things I think I got on Amazon. Okay, so I'm, this has a lot of screen on it. So, oops, so I want to make sure that it's good and adhered. Sometimes you can roll your squeegee down the transfer. I really want to make sure that these edges get down and then once the edges are down everything else should stick I'm gonna pull that off just a little bit the bottom isn't one to stick very well okay I think that'll work So I'm going to use, well, that'll work great, Benita. Thanks for asking the question. Okay, I've got an air bubble over here. So one thing, if you have a transfer that has a lot of screen like this, make sure you get all the bumps out of it. Okay. Okie doke. Can't decide if I want to try to do some shading or if I just want to go all one color. I think we'll lay down one color and then maybe we can go back with shading. This is the orange peel and I'm going to do the whole pumpkin in the same color. But and because this does have a lot of screen, I'm going to try to make sure I'm using a lighter hand and not, not pressing hard. Because I don't want to move the transfer or have it shift slightly. 
I'm trying to learn not to have such a heavy hand. I'm going to turn it around. I'm just going to even out my lines, make sure I get all those squeegee lines out. And then I'm going to put the excess back in my jar. And I think I'm just going to leave it one color. So I'm just going to pull it off. I'm gonna I'm just laying it in a bucket and I'm gonna spray some water on it. And it's just gonna sit over here until I'm ready to clean it in my sink. And just hang out. Okay, so now I'm gonna dry it. So tell me in the comments what your favorite Halloween candy is. You tell me yours and then I'll tell you mine. Jason, that's not a Halloween candy. Not Halloween movie. Halloween candy. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me over my dryer. Okay, so we're going to add just some simple embellishments. Candy Reese's Cups, those are, yeah, those are my favorite. Mine too, although I'm not the biggest fan. <laughs> I, you probably couldn't hear me over my dryer. I'm not the biggest fan of Reese's Cups just because, I one, I hate unwrapping them, and two, the ridges that the wrapper creates, it's always a mess. There's always little chocolate flakes that end up everywhere. And, you know, I don't need any help being messy. So I'm just going to wrap. So that's why I like the I like the Reese's eggs. I like the Reese's pumpkins. I like the Reese's trees. Just because I don't have to. They don't have the ridges. Katie, hey, Katie. She says she found... Pumpkin pie Kit Kats. Ooh, ah, I've seen some of those flavored Kit Kats. I don't know about those. I found a yummy candy. It's by Brock's and it's similar to candy corn, but it's these little tiny little caramel apple candy pieces. It's not the pops, the lollipops. It's little caramel apple candy pieces. So they're Similar to it, they're kind of the same consistency as candy corn. Oh, they are so good. They're just like eating a caramel apple. K 
Katie, I'll have to keep a lookout for the pumpkin pie Kit Kats. But I don't know. Some of those flavored Kit Kats look a little funky. Stacia says her favorite favorite eggs and pumpkins. There's more peanut butter than chocolate. That's the other reason why I like the the, the shapes. And Jason, my husband always makes fun of me that I like the um, the Reese's Fast Break candy bar, but it's because it reminds me of the eggs and the hearts and the um, and the all those pumpkin shapes. Okay, so I just dug through my scrap bin, and I can't just I don't know whether I want to add ribbon or if I just want to do a twine bow. But I'm definitely going to do some beads. Katie, you love the fast breaks? I do too. But Jason, he always makes fun of me because I like those. But I think they're yummy. Yeah. That would be great. So I have this box of beads. I'm going to try to pull out the small beads. Uh, dumping them all on the floor because then my dogs will eat them. It doesn't help that you have a my table is slightly warped, so they're all rolling. Jason says fast breaks are the three musketeers of the Reese's world. They are not. I do not like three musketeers, but I like I like those fast breaks. See, he makes fun of me. table. Anybody else have a favorite can Halloween candy? Okay, so now what's your worst or your least favorite Halloween candy? Katie says if she gets a candy bar, that's your pick, the fast break. Yeah, that's usually my pick too. I'm a peanut butter, peanut butter fan. Okay, until I decide if I'm going to use uh, ribbon or twine, I am going to make a little beaded dangle. <laughs> Amanda, that's your pick too. Jason's least favorite candy, Halloween candy, is the peanut butter and hair flavored candy. And <laughs> those are the ones that are in the black and orange uh, wax paper wrappers. And yes, they taste like peanut butter and hair. Katie doesn't, you can't do, <coughs> excuse me, Katie can't do candy corn. Stacia's least favorite is black licorice. Amanda, you like the black licorice and the uh, black jelly beans? I can handle them. They're not, they're not my fave, but I, I can eat them. But they're not, again, they're not my fave. It's also the same flavoring that's that anise that's in um, uh, Italian sausage. Reminds me of black licorice. <laughs> Katie says, yucky. Benita says, black licorice makes me gag just thinking about it. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if these are all the right, same size. I don't think they are. I think I got a few stragglers. I got a few stowaways. I don't think I'll have to try again on that one. <laughs> uh oh, we've got a black licorice uh, dispute going on. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that there in case I need more. So I'm just I put a little bit of washi tape around the end of my twine to kind of act as a needle. Can Katie says candy corn just feels waxy to me. The flavor's all right. Benita says, and that's why I don't eat Italian sausage. Exactly. I Again, I will eat it and I will eat black licorice, but it is not my favorite. I would prefer not to. I love candy corn, though. I uh, remembered making a trail mix last year. In fact, um, it's 
brown sugar oatmeal squares, Crispix cereal, uh, candy corn, peanuts, and M&Ms. It's so good. How many? I think that's probably... I just need one more. Okay. I've got the dangle done. So I'm just going to tie a knot in the end. Amanda says she doesn't like sausage. I like pork sausage, but I don't like, I'm not the biggest fan of Italian sausage. Again, I will eat it if that's the only option, but Jason said that Halloween trail mix is amazing. It is good. And if you ever get a chance, try the caramel candy corn. It's a darker, it has a darker brown color instead of the, well, I think it's white, orange, and then like a brown. It's really good too. Okay. So I was just going to play with this ribbon. I don't know if I want to use it or if I just want to use twine. Eh, let's give it a whirl. So I'm just going to cut these into more manageable pieces. So I'm just kind of making a scrappy bow. I think I can cut all these. Oh, that one's navy. I don't want to use that one. That one will not look. Yep, that's navy. That one won't look very good. This one is double sided. And then, <coughs> excuse me, I might throw a little bit of bandana scrap in there. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, crisscross these in my twine. Kind of like that. Oops, I think I'll do the orange next. And then we'll lay these down. Okay. Whoops, the pile is falling over. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a quick tie once. I'm going to tie it tight. I'm going to pull some of these to make them even. And then I'm just going to add my dangle. So I'm going to kind of tie it or kind of put it halfway in there. And let's see what a bow looks like on top of all that. And then I'm just going to kind of trim some of these. And I'm going to leave them blunt it might I could go in an angle cut them but oops. so then I'm just gonna spread them apart a little bit fluff them out pull them apart cut this bandana is a little long pull some of these down it's a little long Pull the orange ones apart. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Katie. So you just kind of pull these apart a little bit. That one ended up super short. Oh, 
there we go. I'll get all my trash picked up. Okay. There is our finished project. So I'll show it to you from the front. So there it is. Give me, show me the hearts, thumbs up, all that fun stuff. So oh, I did not paint the back yet, but I can go back in and paint it. Um, but this is just made with one gallon paint sticks that I glued together. Thanks, Bonita. Thanks, Jason. Um, I'll probably have it available at Vendor Bingo, which is October 2nd, the first Saturday in October. Um, but again, I want to remind you that um, we still have this transfer available um, as the September Club Couture transfer. It's an exclusive B-size transfer. You also get the three coordinating paste singles in Current Jam, Guava, and Shimmer Harvest. That is $19.99 a month with free shipping uh, mailed to you uh, to your mailbox. Uh, there is a minimum of a three-month commitment, but you are welcome to cancel at any time after the three months. You also get $4.95 flat rate shipping on any additional chalk site order, and you also get special offers and deals um, given by Chalk Couture. So, you still have about half a month to get that transfer. Go back to my comments. Um, thanks, Stacia. Benita says, I will be in Colorado that weekend. Let me... I think that's the same, the right date. Um, uh, yep, second. So vendor bingo is the first Saturday of every month at seven o'clock at the Eagles Lodge in downtown Salakna. So I'm gonna hop off for the evening. Um, um, I apologize again for yesterday, not going live, but I was just too pooped. So, I will be live again on um, Wednesday at 7.45 p.m. Um, I will not be live on Friday. We have prior engagements. And so, instead of Friday, um, instead of the Friday giveaway, we will do hashtag hump day happy mail. So, be watching on Wednesday at 7.45 Central Time so that you can be eligible to win the hump day happy mail. Happy mail, not meal, but happy mail. So with that, I'm going to sign off for the evening. Have a great rest of the evening, and I will see you on Wednesday.